What's up, ranch hands? Welcome back to the channel. It's the Yellowstone season. I forgot what we're on. Yellowstone 3-6. And we're coming off of another really, really, really powerful episode with a really strong flashback. And it essentially lays out the relationship issues between Jamie and Beth. Yeah. And getting the flashback and the explanation as to essentially why Beth and Jamie hate. Well, it's mostly why Beth hates Jamie. But obviously, he reciprocates that hate really yeah, well. He gives her zero empathy. Yeah. And I mean, just the idea that, I mean, it felt like he was trying to help her. But then the idea that you don't reveal the information about, like, if she proceeds with this abortion, that she becomes sterile. Like, not ha giving her that information and that option. That's, I mean, for him to, like, hold that from her. I'm wondering how much more that flashback's going to come into play. The idea of their relationship and how things resulted when she found out. Yeah. I, like, I wonder if we're going to get to that point, if we're going to see that moment where she realizes what happened and why it happened. And, I mean, again... I just, I just... How could you be so cold to your sister? Unless you didn't fully grasp what that meant to sterilize her? I think that's a fair question because Jamie was also young in that moment, but he's also a very smart kid. Like, yeah, I mean, he, like, you work around... He's not, like, like 10 in the flashback. and everything. You understand what sterilization means, I hope. He seemed old enough to know what that meant in the moment, and, I mean, I wanted to go back and rewatch it and see what his facial expression was when she told him the information, but, like, did yeah. Did he already hate her? I don't know. Like, was that was it done out of hate or was it done out of urgency? Was it done out of, like, trying to protect her privacy? Like, as he said, like, you can't go into town. They're going to know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if any of that is the case or if it was just him not being aware of the situation. I, there's a di bunch of different options as to how that played out. But, yeah, I mean, again, it just goes back to show what their relationship is like currently as we're watching, like, the now in the show. Because, again, like, you put someone through that without necessarily them having any knowledge of it, that's a big deal. And especially now seeing all this relationship stuff with Rip and the idea of, like, being married and can't have his kid and it was his kid that was aborted and... It's just all of it. And like you start going back because as we're watching this now, I'm editing earlier episodes. There are a lot of moments that kind of stick out where mm -hmm. seeing Rip with Tate got her, I think, upset, if I remember correctly. Yes. Like there's that moments. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, there's moments throughout the show early before you get this information that it's like, oh, that's why she lashed out at him in that moment. That's why she got emotional in that moment. That's why she was behaving like this in that moment. Well, and it's, it's like holy like, shit. Why she is the way she is at all. For sure. And I mean, just imagine, look at her childhood. Yes. But I mean, like, imagine like what would have happened if she would have been able to keep the baby? Would her dad have been pissed? Would Rip been in trouble? Would Rip been kicked out? Right. Did she do it to protect him? She did it to protect herself. That's a lot. It is. She was a kid. And at the same time, she didn't have a mother to go to to help her through this moment. Right. So that also adds a lot to it as a young girl dealing through that and not having her mother there. That's like that's awful. a lot. That's way too much for a young kid to be dealing with. And just the idea that, again, she's so brash and aggressive and angry with people that we don't necessarily know or people that are in her life. But it makes but, sense. But with her dad and with Rip... Mm -hmm. She's super warm. She's super tight. She's super, like, committed and, like, she's dedicated to them. She's loyal. But when it comes to, like, Jamie, I mean, there was an episode that I just watched where, like, he was going through all the politics stuff and things fell through and, like, the whole article stuff was coming out. And then, he, like, he was going to partner with, with Thomas and, like, he didn't know what to do. And Beth's like, come home. Get out of there. You're not a politician. Went through that whole speech and then came home and he was like, you told me to come home. And she's like, why would you ever listen to me? And it's like that kind of stuff just makes so much sense now because of the relationship. The, the trauma. And it started really early on in terms of their beefing as siblings. Well, like she went to him for help. Yeah. I'm in trouble. I need help. And how do you help me? You sterilize me. Yeah. Which again, I would be, don't know if it's intentional if I or not. If I had my babies, yeah. I will fucking kill you. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm wondering... Again, I'm wondering, I said this in the last episode, if this is going to play out more in the current timeline, 
to where because again, Rip and Beth are like way tighter than we've seen them since the show started. Right. And they're essentially like living together. Even the fact that she brought that up and said wife is something for Rip to call her. I'm wondering if this is gonna play out because it goes two ways now. Beth is honest with Rip and he gets really angry, aggressive with Jamie and eliminates him. But also Rip could get mad at I I don't see Rip getting mad at her for like hiding that information. No. Because at the time like, like I, I think he would have understood little, yeah, the situation, regardless of what you believe in. Yeah. But I, I think his immediate reaction was would be to go hurt Jamie, which I think that would make a lot of sense if she continues to like divulge that information even more, because it's really messed with her future. Yeah. Like it's like her like yeah, if that if was her my everything if her goals and dreams because we don't necessarily know what they were when she was young but if she wanted to have a big family and like raise it on the ranch and like keep the family growing that way because when it comes to like the Dutton line yes the boys can continue it but Beth like she she's not able to do that anymore yeah and that's yeah. that's really difficult and all I ever I mean it may sound like a small dream. But it was big, you know, it's big to me. All I ever wanted to be was a mom. Yeah. That's all I ever wanted to do. And especially to little girls. I always wanted to now. be a girl mom. We have two now. Yeah. So, yeah, that whole storyline, I'm, I'm very curious to see how it goes and how it continues to play into the current timeline. But Beth's also dealing with this Warwick dude. That shit got really intense this last episode. Yeah. Where she's talking about, You're like, the trailer yeah, park and I'm the tornado. That's I such a great it. line. And he's, like, pitching this idea of, like, generational wealth and your family will be set forever and this and that. And she's like, yeah, I agree with you. But my daddy ain't no, ain't gonna agree to that. So we're gonna fight, and it's both of them hit them with the like, be careful what you ask for kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, last time we got into a situation like this, it got really, really violent. It got really, really dark. I'm wondering where the line is with this battle because again, this is a massive corporation, and it's I don't know if they're gonna be send goons to go hurt people like the last one did. So I, I don't know where this is going to go, but it's very difficult. Thomas and John had to sit down again to come to terms, to agree on this again, because they need to. And yeah. Thomas still that has his... Thomas's girl is going to go Oh, yeah, it. that too. Thomas still has his plan to do what he needs to do. They've got common enemies now, so they got to come back together again and figure that out. And uh, the storyline with Casey helping this family, moving this whole giant flock of horses. Are they called flocks? Are they, are they a herd? A herd of horses? What do you call a group of horses? I don't know. A group of crows is I think a that's a. I think that's I a good know. question for y'all to answer real quick. That's but a herd? Dude, he, he killed himself. Casey wanted to help the family, sold all the horses, gave them the money. And it goes against a rule that John even said shouldn't exist. So I'm wondering with him being in that role as livestock agent, I wonder if... Something's going to come back and bite him for this decision. God, I hope not. I hope not. We'll see. It feels like Casey does a lot of stuff that things could potentially come back and bite him. But we'll see. This was like one of those good decisions. Mm -hmm. One of those very helpful things. But yeah, there's still Hopefully a, others see whole it that lot, way too. a whole lot of stuff going on with this show. It feels like it's really starting to crank up. So you mm -hmm. ready for this episode? Yes. Let's go. Oh. Breakfast is ready. Let's go. It's the bread. Is it the same bread that Rip so. was making? I think so. Where's your sister? When it comes to bread, I'll eat any bread. Almost any bread. That looks yummy. Oh my girl. I feel like something bad. Come on! Let's... Was that a note on her bed? I couldn't tell. Sala didn't spend the night there last night, did she? No? No, she didn't come home. Thank you. Hello, Jim. Sala isn't over there, is she? Shit. Will you let me know if she comes by? What a horrible feeling. Call the police, although I don't know. What time did Sala drop her off? And she said she was coming straight home. Sala! Oh my god, my heart dropped. Oh my God. 
Well, you don't want to freak out. You don't want to be like, oh, yeah. And, and they were. I'd be freaking out. I know. Same. Also, but like, you know how it's like. Do they not get, <sighs> do they not get that proper service, though, being on the res? Is I don't she, know. I don't know. I don't know. That's literally one of the most horrifying things. When your kid's not where they're supposed to be, when you ex expect them to be in a certain spot, yeah, that's a nightmare. Please don't let that baby be in there. That was awful. So we found her car about 10 miles from here, ran out of gas. There's no sign of a struggle, so my guess is she either hitched a ride or tried to walk it. There's no telling which, so for now, we're assuming both. I need to put together a search, Tom, and I don't have the manpower. Yeah, I'll make some calls. I don't know what her chances are. You know exactly what her chances are, Ben. Oh my God. Who is he? Just a horse trading, lion, half a criminal. Rep, we sold cattle up to the field above that newborn. Sir, those son of bitches say anything to you. You don't react. Cool heads, understood? This bastard will try and test you. Hey, there's Steve. Yeah, I guess that whole plan worked out for him. A long time, John. Not long enough for me, you son of a bitch. Oh, oh shit. All so right. So much for cool heads. What happened to that? cool Yeah. Head. There you go. <laughs> I didn't mean me. What scam you running today? No scam. We're babysitting in Boston for the resort. Resort's in the buffalo business now. They're in the tourist business. Charge $600 for people to ride up here in a dude string and have pictures taken of them. They've been tested for brucellosis. Got a whole army now, I see. You always got an army, don't you, John? Papers are good. Why didn't you just show him that the other day? Because I didn't like the way he asked. All right. I don't want to see them things on our side of the fence. Law says it's not our job to keep him from getting in. It's your job to keep him from getting out. He should know that, Commissioner. Oh, I'll keep him out. Oh, shit. You're going to fucking hate the way I do it. <laughs> We're a little long in the tooth. For old feuds, Wade. Uh, without old feuds, got none at all. Where's the fun in that? Shit, dude. So intense. <laughs> oh, man. Going to a funeral? Got work to do. You won't work Saturdays for us, but you're sure working for yourself. Not for this shit. Uh-oh. That made him mad, and he's not going to take it anymore. Let's just skip straight to the problem, the real problem between us. It's too early in the morning to dig up that skeleton, Jamie. Well, I'm digging it up anyway. You know what is so fucking dangerous about you? Is you actually believe that you're helping. Oh, boy. But you refuse to look at the results of your help. You refuse to acknowledge the carnage that your help leaves behind. Here we go. Because as a man, you're broken. Your soul, your mind is broken. Damn. And it's not your fault, I guess. He made you into something you had no business being. Oh my God. I guess that's why he did it. But there's just no right or wrong with you. Just his approval, that's all that matters to you. That's all you are, but his disapproval and how much you fear it. That is what makes you truly evil, Jamie. And you are evil. All I have ever tried to do is protect this family. Most of the time, from itself. You more than anyone should understand that. I'm gonna tell you a little secret. The more you become what he wanted you to become, the more he'll hate you for it. And he does hate you for it. We all do. I should have said no, because then you couldn't blame me for doing exactly what you asked me to do. I didn't ask you for a fucking hysterectomy. Oh, shit. They took everything? She was just a kid. You know, when you consider the pain that you cause a person, the person's fault, that's evil, Jamie. My God. 
God, dude. So he takes no responsibility at all for any of the bad stuff that has resulted. He just kind of just keeps moving forward. I guess. Has he ever said sorry for that moment? Also, what happened to his baby? I mean, that's... They plant a lot of seeds and they let slip. I'm sure it'll pop back up when worst time possible. But it's like every time Jamie and Beth are alone in a room... It's trouble. It's just... It's tough to watch. I get it, though. Oh, for sure. God, these horses are pretty. All right. That's like a grandpa. Girl, <laughs> you got daddy issues. Hey, some just like them older. That's a little too old. No offense. Sorry. Age gap folks out there. It's Pearl Racers' hands. I'll say that. Can you toss me a water, babe? I'm sorry. Did you just call him babe? Thank you, sugar. <laughs> Two dances. Here I'm hauling them to the arena, saddling their horses, sitting in the bleachers watching them. Now I'm the damn buckle bunny. <laughs> I need a barrel racer in my life like I need another hemorrhoid. And here I am anyway, toting her shit around. That's a lot of woman you got there. She's gonna want more than you can offer living in a bunkhouse. Rodeo was supposed to be my way out of the bunkhouse. Rodeo's as bad on relationships as cowboy. Can't be married to two things at the same time, Jimmy. That's what got you banged up in the first place, is thinking about her instead of that rocket you was getting on. Mr. Dutton says I can't do it anymore anyway. He told me that too once, right after he paid a stack of my hospital bills. Mm -hmm. The only one that can decide if you're gonna rodeo is you. Maybe I could just do another event, team rope, maybe. <laughs> you can't rope a post with a 10 foot loop. <laughs> but I can sit a bucking horse like nothing I ever seen, at least, well, since I quit anyway. Oh. Aww. You gotta leave your brain out of it. Decide with your heart. I love Lloyd. It's the only way you'll ever have peace with it. When did you decide to quit? My body decided for me. Now it's all I can do to get out of bed every morning. I miss it. Yeah, I miss it too. Dude, these two have become such an amazing couple characters. Uh, just hearing them talk about that and not being able to do it anymore. Uh, we all get old and broken from our sport. We've got a missing person. We always have a missing person, but we never have the resources to find them. I'm getting pretty tired of that staying the same. Well, I'm not sure how much help I can be, but you got it. That's what you're asking for. I got three agents close by. Be there in three hours? Three more or something. Are you just looking for badges or do you need volunteers too? We're putting together volunteer groups as well. I'll make a call, see if I can't get you some more. Thank you. That music is creepy as shit. Yeah. Was that a violin? Oh, look who's showing up. Oh God. Appreciate you meeting us. My pleasure. This is Market Equity CEO. I'm Willa Hayes. Jamie Dutton. Jamie's meeting with a fucking army, it looks like. Jeez, the way they walked in. I have a proposal. I'm all ears. Rather than the state buying the land, I'm gonna make you an offer. 50,000 acres for $10,000 an acre. That's $500 million. You'll never be priced out of anything. The fuck? Holy shit. Ever again. Don't answer me now, let that number sink in. And we'll discuss it again at our meeting with the governor. That was fast. Like, I understand. It's like hearing that kind of number, but also Jamie's like such an outsider, it feels like, in terms of like the family. Wasn't he written out of the trust too? So like he wouldn't get any of that money, right? I thought I thought Beth wrote him out. All right, folks, listen up. Everybody stays 10 feet apart. You scan the area around you. Now don't just look for Sila, right? You look for clothes, footprints. A phone, a set of keys. If you find something, do not touch it. You stand over it and you shout, hey, let's go. Oh my God. Oh 
This is, this is awful. Please find me. I'm wondering if Casey being in that role is going to be able to bridge the gap between the two groups better because of his obvious relationship with Monica. Right, I don't know. I wonder if that's going to be a good thing. This breaks my heart. You know her? I know her. Good kid. This only happens to good kids. Oh. Is that a wolf? Caillou? Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no, he found. Tell him not to come any closer. Everybody stop! Oh, honey. Same as yours, Ben. Let's go tell her mother. God damn. The fuck? What is this? You go from that scene to this scene? Like, what the hell? I mean, I feel like he just looks like some kind of like sexy Jesus on the buffalo. No one can understand you. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying, baby? How is he staying on that fucking thing? Well, he can't buck. He can't rear up. But they can roll over on your ass. It's unbelievable. <laughs> hey, we all about some buffalo out there in that field. There ain't no buffalo out in the field by the corrals. Mm -hmm. There's about 30. They got this mean old bastard watching them. What was his name? Oh, Wade Morrow. Mmm. Yeah, they're his buffalo. It feels like riding a buffalo. Oh, someone's gonna get in trouble. Or hurt. You gotta rope him by the horns. And then what? And then you pull him to a stop, you jump on, and off you go. I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Girl, you cray. Is Wade gonna do something crazy? I'm so I'm worried about. Are you kidding me? Let it go. You all right? <laughs> that was fucking awesome. Yeah. I mean, outside of torturing the animal, that's got to be a hell of a rush. Just jump on the back of a wild animal and start riding it. I don't know, man. That's why they're called wild. What this place is facing, it isn't an enemy. It's a perspective. It's a shift in values. The world doesn't value your way of life anymore, Dad. That sucks. I know. You can't delegate this fight to fucking Jamie. Casey, he just doesn't have the patience or, or the skill, and well, I can't do it by myself. But you have to, honey. You have to teach Casey, and you have to learn how to trust Jamie. Mm-mm. Trust Jamie. You're the one telling me I shouldn't trust Jamie. What does it matter, Beth, if I keep this place for another 10 years and the three of you lose it because you couldn't no. figure it out? No. Beth. You don't know him. And what is it you know, Beth, that the rest of us don't? Uh-oh. You're going to tell him. What did he do, Beth? I can't help you, Beth, if rough. you won't tell me what it is. Looking for clues, trying to help. The only thing you're gonna find out here is exactly what she found, and that's not gonna help anything. It's not fair. No, it certainly isn't, but it was designed that way from the beginning. We're not supposed to be here. Reservations were supposed to be temporary. We we're supposed to learn how to be white, then go live in cities, and then this land would be sold too. But we didn't learn to be white. Wouldn't. And now, here we are. The government won't help because it doesn't want to. It wants us to die. because it wants the land, and that's all it's ever wanted. That's why I want our land back, so we can build lies that they can't take away. How do I help? I'm forming a council. Focus on violence against women on the reservation. Our first fight is against being ignored. Would you like to lead that fight? I can lead that fight. That's how you help. I need to uh, talk to you about something. So Market Equities Group, All made the a... promises I've made in my life, son. Oh, boy. I didn't love your mother so much, I'd break it. 
I swear to God, I would break it. Did something happen? I don't understand. What happens in 30 years, Jamie? When you and your brother and your sister are too old to fight for this place and Tate has to fight for it on his own. What are you, what are you talking about? Lee wouldn't marry. Didn't want children. I doubt you will either. Now your sister can't. She can't because of you. She came to me. She was scared. I was scared. I'm to take that from her, Jamie. Who the fuck do you think you were to take that from her? Hey, hey, hey. The hell's going on here? Ask your brother. I fucking hate him. I fucking hate you. <laughs> now something clicked for me. Why this is so impactful. And we talked about it for like a split second in the intro. Offspring. Yeah. Tate's got nobody else. But you also just mentioned Jamie's kid. Yeah. Like that, is that going to come into play here? I don't know. But the fact that like Lee wouldn't marry and wouldn't have kids, Casey has one. Said it's all for nothing. Everything I've got is all for nothing. Holy shit. This is such an emotional story. Like, this is so insane. And like, you really, until it like starts unraveling, you don't fully understand the impact. And the impact just hit me right now because I didn't realize Lee refused to marry and have kids. And then you realize Jamie also very similarly probably won't ever marry and have kids. Even though That's just supposedly, not that they, yeah. Su but supposedly he's got a kid. I don't know how true that story is. We'll see if it comes into play. Beth being unable to, it's like Casey's the only one who could carry the legacy of this family, and Tate is the only one of like he's the last one. I mean, again, with depending on what's up with Jamie in that situation. But, but yeah, you understand the impact. Tate, Tate is going to have to fight for all this on his own when everybody's gone and it's like... There's going to be no cousins for him to... You know. Like, there's no other kids that's going to be... Again, the Jamie thing, I think that's obviously going to come into play because I, I, one of those seeds planted a little while ago, now that the story's blowing up, the idea, and, and again, I talk about the flashback and the use of the flashbacks in this show as being perfect. There's a lot of flashbacks that are used in other stories that are awful and they don't work. But the idea that we get that flashback and then you start seeing things building in current time and then you start getting the coming off of last episode into this one and like Jamie and Beth having a clash and then going to that moment and then John asking Beth trust him and she's like, you don't fucking know him. And she starts getting emotional and upset. And John's like, I can't help you if I don't know what happened. And so like the way this is all unraveling now, it is just so insane, especially on the back of the idea of this generational wealth that they're being offered. There is no generation. Exactly. Suffer Tate. Right. Tate is the only one who essentially is going to benefit from all of this. And it's one of those things where that, like the idea, it just like that hurts because you know what John wants and it's not there. Yeah. It's just, he doesn't have 40 grandkids running around his ranch like he probably wanted. And it's just one of those things where, I mean, his kids, a couple of them made the decision to not go down that road and do the family thing. Beth obviously wanted the, I don't know if Beth wanted to be like a mom and have like a bunch of kids, but the idea that that option was ripped from I was gonna her say, she is get the, to make a choice. Exactly. That's that's the problem with the situation and just seeing like this is so emotional. I hate it. I mean, it's good to watch or whatever, but well, like, yeah, I hate the idea that drama. this is what some yeah, this is awful. But does Jamie then get spiteful and be like, you know what? I want that five hundred million. I he's so. he's not. I mean, I don't know how that's going to come into play, but. 
I don't think he has the power or the authority to Sell, take right? it all. Yeah, I don't think he can do that. I don't. I'm he's, sure he's the attorney general. Can't he do something without the owner of the land? Yeah, I don't know. To even have again an conflict of interest. Yeah, I, I think a lot of that would come into play. But when it comes to like, I ironically, I think it was like two episodes ago that I edited. It was talking about the family trust. I don't know if anything ever got changed with that. But Jamie was throwing a tantrum about it because Beth wrote him out of it. Right. So I'm wondering if he still knows that he doesn't get that money. Like he's not going to. Yeah, be he's going to have to get the 500 million in order to do anything with it. But he's not going to like if if the check gets written out to John Dutton, it doesn't. It, it wouldn't get distributed to Jamie if he's not part of the the family. I don't think Jamie cares at this point. I don't know. He cares I mean, about the title. I that's feel a lot like. of money. Yeah, it is. It's. That's like... I'll sell this house for $500 million. Sure thing. Yeah. Right on top of that, Rose, you I, can have it. I just... I'm wondering... Like, Jamie didn't even get a chance to tell John about that yet. No, but it sounds like he knows. I don't know if he knows that aspect of it, but I don't think anyone knows unless Jamie... Jamie definitely didn't tell Beth. Jamie, unless it's like a, you know, just like a... I don't yeah, know. I don't, I, don't I, don't think, know. I don't think they're aware of that, like, that there, deal. There's got to be conversations that we yeah. don't see. And there's going to be a lot of conversations to be had. But, I mean, this whole family dynamic thing, this single decision made all those years ago is now having such a major impact on this family. As it would. And the idea that, like, there's already been, like, ruffles and issues and obviously a lot of butting heads here and there. But now that this is out in the open... I'm wondering if Jamie's going to actually tell Casey what went down. But like with Beth lurking in the background, I'm wondering if she's going to say something to Casey. Mm -hmm. But this this almost feels like a situation that actually finally pushes Jamie out. And if this news gets to rip, he's 100% a goner. He's dead. Like, but I'm, I'm set on that now. To think of that they would give a hysterectomy to a child. She's a child. That's You're yeah. under 18? You're a child. Even when you're 19, you're still a kid. You're still a teenager. So much of her life was still ahead of her. Like, that's just... And I, it's all just taken away. Yeah. And I just, I can't imagine how many other people have had to do this because they couldn't have a baby at that time. Shit happens. And you have that entire option taken. Yeah. Not just, like... Tubes tied or whatever, like fucking they'll pull Removed, it all out. Right, yeah. And I think that ties back into the whole situation that Thomas and Monica were talking about on the res with the girl missing. I, that I was just thinking like, oh, she started wandering and maybe fell into that ditch, no, but something somebody, happened to her. Somebody happened yeah. to her. And just the idea, the issues that all of these folks are dealing with it's really sad and insanely unfortunate and Unfair. i mean yeah totally and what's going to happen now if monica starts citing on thomas's side of things well, i mean she does i know but like she's conflicted she's like in the middle of things but like john is the grandfather of her child and thomas is in the process of trying to take everything from john which would be taking everything from tate which, uh, I mean, yeah, that's going to be tough. that's going to be a wild dynamic if it gets to that point. But it feels like he's. But then does Tate get to have it, though? I mean, it because depends. Tate, I don't know. It, Tate is half. We've got a long ways to go before we get to the point of Tate acquiring all this land. Like just put everything in Tate's so, name. I mean, I that feels like the way to go. But it's one of those things where I, I hope I hope Thomas is being genuine with Monica and not just trying to see her as or a like person that he could use. Yeah. Just like bring her in because of the connection that she has with Casey and No, I hope he's John. also being genuine because, I mean, it's it, it's an actual problem. Yeah, and it's something that she's very passionate about and she cares a lot about and wants to legitimately help solve these problems. And if he's just out here just be looking at like, oh, I could take advantage of a situation. Like, I hope it's not that. I hope he's being honest and genuine and actually wants to bring her onto this council and help solve these problems because it is a problem. They've talked about it before in the past to where girls go missing all the time and there just isn't the manpower, but there also just isn't the care to help. So it's like bring a little light to this issue and maybe it could help bring a little bit of closure to some of the problems and maybe come to a resolution and fix some of the issues. 
But again, I just hope his intentions are in a good place. Yeah, me too. So, I, I don't know. I feel like he's he's turned a corner. I mean, so, his I, I mean his goals remains the same, but I think between like the conversation with Mo and Mo telling him like, yeah, I went to war with these dudes. They're not necessarily the enemy that you think they are. That aspect of it might be a little different, but his intentions stay the same. But maybe there's a different level of respect now amongst these folks that maybe wasn't there at the beginning. But this whole situation, I mean, Warwick coming in with that friggin' essentially an army of people and then the CEO just being like, yeah, I wanna give you 500 mil. Uh, and Jamie's just sitting there by himself. Yeah. I don't know if I like the idea of Jamie under these circumstances sitting alone, dealing with these negotiations and these conversations. I feel like other people need to be there, but the next conversation is going to be with the governor. And again, it's going to be one of those situations for her where all these jobs, the growth in the land versus destroying the land that the people of the state love and want. Yeah. So this is getting intense. The family drama, <sighs> I, I, my mind immediately goes to rip finding out what Jamie. Oh my God. Like that's oh immediately God. where it goes. Uh, may everyone have mercy on your soul. It's just one of those things where I feel like we've hit a couple moments where I've had the expectation of Jamie checking out of the family and leaving. I think this might be the moment to where it's finally too much. Where he doesn't have, he has nowhere else to go. He's gonna die, is what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Like, he's going to the he's train going station. To, yes, that's what I'm referring to. Got it. Like, he had an option to walk away, obviously, before, but now I feel like things, this just impact, and with everything that they're dealing with, and all this talk of legacy, and the conversations with Beth and Rip about family and all that stuff, this has hit a peak to where I don't think there's any coming back from this. No. Like, there's no way. No. And now that this is revealed to the family, what actually happened all those years ago? Holy shit! I I, I for sure think that this is going to be the end. Like this moment, what we had in this episode is going to be the result of the end of Jamie at some point. I don't know if it's going to happen quickly because obviously he's in a very high role in politics. You can't just kill the attorney general and to be like, we're good. I don't know where he went. Like obviously, or maybe you could, maybe he was in a kayaking yeah, accident, right? But it's one of those things where he's in a role now where he's super protected. But again, John could just have him removed from that role because we've seen how many people go in and out of that spot now. <laughs> Seems like three. No, Attorney General. Yeah. He's an old guy. He passed it down. But I thought like the girl took it. I don't know where she ever went. I yeah, that's. I, I don't I know all, that story I asked ever. The other, yeah. The other video and I. I don't know what happened. What happened there. to her? Something must have like we must have missed Spooked it. Spooked her and we just. I don't know, but. It just feels like he's a difficult person to eliminate currently just because of the role he's in. But I think this is going to end up resulting in the end of Jamie, sure. whether it's soon or not. But yeah. yeah, this story just continues to get crazier and crazier and more I emotional. Do, I do absolutely love this show and how everyone isn't on Team Beth. I'll never understand. Yeah, I love her to death and I fully understand like why she is the way that she is because I would be that fucking way too. Yeah, I mean she is she is a lot to handle, that's for sure. Well, but I especially the energy for you today. Especially as you start realizing what her story is, I I think she's an incredible character. I think she's amazing. I I'm on team Beth all the way for sure. But I could also handle that kind of like I, I think that type of attitude is cool. Like, I think it's interesting. I mean, you know. I don't have that. No. Yeah, not at all. I'm Zero. Not, I am not the tornado. You're not feisty at all. The, not, In your trailer park. I'm bit. the gentle breeze. Sure thing. <laughs> right. That's why Nikki's motto is as I please. Because, yeah. I'll do so, as I please. So, yeah, I, I, I think her okay, mindset is awesome. Okay, maybe a subtle awesome. earthquake through your trailer park. Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little baby Being tornado. in California, it makes more sense to be an earthquake. Because yeah. we don't get tornadoes, at least in our neck of the woods. But no, sir. Yeah, I, I think Beth is an incredible character. I think Rip's incredible. I mean, Jamie as a villain is incredible. Because it's like every time you see this dude on screen, I just want to, like, punch him in the face. Word. Like, literally, that's where my mind goes you every shake time. shake him real good. And especially when he, like, <laughs> flips the switch and starts going business mode. Oh. And he has that little smirk on his face. And you're just like, like, I'm going to smack that smirk right off. He is, he is doing his job so well. Yeah, he's a great actor. And, I mean, 
the whole cast is awesome in their own right. So yeah, everything about this show is incredible. The story is so powerful and emotional, like mm-hmm. all around. Mm-hmm. Anything else? no all right y'all you guys share all your thoughts leave them comments down below we'll see you later for the next one have a good one bye